Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing one of the individual gas laws, Charles's Law. Here is our syllabus top point. Gas laws are a number of laws which describe the behaviour of gases under various conditions. There are four individual gas laws of which Charles's Law is one of. For the gas laws to be applied, they must follow ideal gas assumptions which are that gases have multiple ideal properties, including that they have low density, they are free-flowing or forming, meaning that they leak through cracks and fill the volumes of containers, they are compressible and expandable, and they are diffusive. Jacques Charles was an 18th century innovator who influenced the development of the hot air balloon. The principles which were utilised to develop the hot air balloon were relevant to the development of what was called Charles's Law, which is one of the individual gas laws. So Charles's law states that volume is directly proportional to temperature, but importantly, this is only true if both pressure and amount are constant. So what does this mean? This relationship can be understood by considering the ideal gas law, PV equals to NRT. We can rearrange this formula by dividing both sides by P in order for us to get a new equation, V equals to NRT divided by P. So when pressure and amounts are constant, NR divided by P is going to be a constant value. And we can say that NR over P is some constant value equal to K. So then the equation becomes V equals to K multiplied by T. Thus, since V is equal to K multiplied by T, V must be directly proportional to T by some constant value K. And that's what's given to us that V is directly proportional to T. This means that however much we increase the volume, temperature should increase the same amount if pressure and amount are kept constant. In the context of Charles's law, we can define volume as the space that is occupied by a gas and temperature as the average kinetic energy of gas molecules that are in the system. Common units for volume are the millimeter, the liter, which one liter equals to 1000 milliliters, and one meter cubed, which is equivalent to 1000 liters. Temperature can also be measured in different units. Kelvin is the absolute temperature of a substance. Degree Celsius, which is temperature relative to the freezing point of water, which is measured to be zero degrees Celsius. Degree Celsius can be converted into Kelvin by adding 273.15, as 273.15 Kelvin is equivalent to zero degrees Celsius. The derivation of Charles's law from the ideal gas law PV equals to NRT also provides us with the relationship V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. This can be interpreted as, in the event of a change in either volume or pressure, because of the direct proportionality of V and T, the initial volume, V1, divided by the initial temperature, T1, must be equal to the final volume, V2, divided by the final temperature, T2. Here we have a graph which demonstrates the direct proportionality between temperature and volume given that amount and pressure are kept equal in a gaseous system. Note that at the temperature of zero, the volume of gas is a non-zero value. We can use an animation to demonstrate the ideas which are illustrated by Charles's law. Consider a flexible container which contains molecules of gas. Initially, the gas particles are going to be vibrating with a certain amount of energy inside of that system. However, when we increase the temperature, because the container is flexible, what is going to happen is the volume is also going to increase. Here we can see an example of the opposite phenomenon occurring in real life as a demonstration of Charles's law. When an inflated balloon is submerged into a vessel containing liquid nitrogen, the temperature drastically decreases. According to Charles's law, a decrease in temperature must have a proportionally equal decrease in volume, given that the amount of gas in the vessel and the pressure remains the same. As a result of the decrease in temperature, the balloon shrivels and the volume decreases. As previously mentioned, Jacques Charles was a pioneer in the development of the hot air balloon. The hot air balloon uses principles related to Charles's law to help the vehicle fly. When a flame is introduced under the balloon on the top section of the wicker basket, the air in the space beneath the balloon starts to expand, 
and thus rises to fill up the hot air balloon. Now as the air continues to expand, the density of the air inside of the balloon will be decreased. Since the density is less than surrounding air, this hot air balloon will now be able to lift off. Bread baking is another example of how Charles's law is applied in everyday life. When bread is baked, the increase in temperature causes tiny air pockets inside of the bread dough to increase in size and expand. These holes, which are caused by the expansion of gas, can be seen in the cross section of a slice of bread. Limitations of Charles's law include that it has a reliance on the ideal gas assumptions, which assume that at extreme temperatures there are no changes in phase or properties of gas. And therefore, in order for it to be true, Charles's law relies on the fact that phase change does not occur at extreme temperatures. Let's have a look at some practice questions. The question reads that a balloon contains a volume of 1 litre at STP. If the temperature is increased to 546.15 Kelvin, what will be the new volume of the balloon? So we can use the relationship described to us by Charles's law, V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2, for us to answer this question. In this case, the initial volume, V1, is equal to 1 litre. The initial temperature, T1, is at STP, which is 273.15 Kelvin, and the T2 is going to equal to 546.15 Kelvin. So we can substitute these values in order for us to get V2, where V2 is equal to V1 multiplied by T2 divided by T1, if we multiplied T2 on both the left and the right hand side. This will give us an answer of 2.0 liters, which is given as well in two significant figures, since that is the smallest amount of significant figures given to us in the question. This next question reads, a gas occupies a volume of three liters at 300 Kelvin and one atmosphere. If the volume of gas changes to two liters at the same pressure, what is the new temperature? So importantly, this question tells us that the pressure remains the same after the volume of gas changes. This is important as Charles's law is not applicable when pressure changes in a system. So we can use again the same relationship as previously, V1 on T1 equals to V2 on T2 to calculate our answer. The initial volume V1 is equal to 3 liters and the initial temperature is equal to 300 Kelvin. This time we are given the new volume V2 which equals to 2 liters, but we are not given the new temperature. So we can rearrange again our equation to work out what T2 is. By inverting both the left and the right hand side of the equation, T1 on V1 equals to T2 on V2. And then by multiplying both the left and the right hand sides by V2, we can get the inequality T2 equals to T1 times V2 divided by V1. If we substitute these values, 300 multiplied by 2 divided by 3 is equal to 200 Ks. And so the new temperature is 200 Kelvin. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.